the set of choices, we greet you in the precious name of Jesus. To all our listeners across Guyana and the diaspora, we look forward to this opportunity of being with you. We want to encourage you from the Word of God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, we say, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Put the family together, hail out to your friends, let them know choices is on. God bless you. This evening we want to pay tribute to Dr. Miles Monroe, who went to be with the Lord on the 9th of November, uh, 2014. Dr. Monroe can be described as one of God's champions who fought the good fight, finished his course, and kept the faith. He noted in one of his expositions that death and the cemetery cannot rob you if you die empty, and that age did not matter as long as purpose was fulfilled. He explained how Jesus, at the age of 33, fulfilled purpose by pouring out his life for the world in those areas of ministry where God wanted him to before his ascension. We believe like Jesus, like the Apostle Paul, Dr. Monroe fulfilled purpose in a great way and that the grave did not rob him. This is evident in his work and ministry as a leader of leaders, an international renowned author, lecturer, teacher, life coach, government consultant, and leadership mentor. He spent the last 30 years traveling the world and training leaders in business, education, and religion. Dr. Monroe was also the founder of the Board of Trustees of the International Third World Leaders Association, ITWLA, an all professional global network of leaders focusing on formal leadership, leadership development, and training, primarily in developing nations. He founded the Bahamas Faith Ministries International, which is one of the largest churches in the Bahamas. He wrote approximately six books, many of which became best-selling books in the marketplace, including Becoming a Leader, The Spirit of Leadership, The Principles and Power Vision, The Pursuit of Purpose, Rediscovering the Kingdom, Understanding Your Potential, Releasing Your Potential, God's Big Idea, and In Charge, among many others. As an ambassador of Christ, he served his time well and left a great legacy for many of us to latch on to and to follow. Gentlemen, the life and times of Dr. Mondo. Another of his quotes says, life is not measured by duration, but by donation. And he has contributed significantly to the lives of many all over the world. I, I once heard my own bishop saying, and in a jovial way he was saying this, this man is so talented, you know, he's so gifted, he can do so many things, you know, he wasn't just a motivational speaker, he wasn't just a pastor, but he was gifted in the arts. And I want to point our attention to a portion of scripture that is from the Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. And it says, a gift opens the way for the giver and ushers him into the presence of the great. I think the late Dr. Miles Monroe was a true embodiment of this portion of scripture. And in paying tribute to him, you know, in my personal library, outside of my religious study, all most of his writings are part of my library. And it has been a blessing to me in so many ways, you know, it's, it's, 
not, I can't even comprehend because as I read his word and as, as I look at the things that he would have done in his own life, you know, understanding where he came from and how God has raised this man up to be a blessing to the world at large. Uniquely gifted. Uh, Dr. Monroe would look into a crowd and spot an individual and he would go beyond the uh, facade and probe deep within that person and he, he had the insight to be able to recognize giftings that were not generally obvious and he moved beyond just recognizing, just thinking, he moved to production. Uh, what, what I mean by that, some of us uh, we, we could only deal with the cognitive, we know, we recognize this person is gifted. But he had this unusual ability to move beyond recognizing the gift to provoking that gift and created an enabling environment for that gift to produce. And so uh, I believe that was uh, one of the tremendous uh, creative abilities God gave to him. In 2000, I met him 29 years or 30 years ago, somewhere around then. And um, I, I must admit that my life has not been the same. Uh, he was extremely provocative with his thoughts. <laughs> In the first five years, I, I heard him. He challenged every bit of theology that I had studied. He challenged these concepts. And from a theological standpoint, and um, helped me to understand that irrespective of where you have come from, God has given each man or woman a gift. No one is born in this world without a gift. And he believed that his assignment was to, unique assignment, was to challenge leaders, uh, rather followers, to become leaders. He believed that this, this was this God-given assignment. Wherever he went, whether it's Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa, Asia, China, Europe. This was his particular gift to transform followers into leaders. And once they had become leaders, they would then seek to bring transformation to people, to their homes, to their communities, to the nation, and to the world. And this, this young man was born in, in poverty um, in, 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 in the Bahamas there. But he never allowed that to prevent him from becoming. And so wherever he went, he had eyes not just to see what was natural, but his heart provided a picture, a powerful vision of what could be. I wish up several years ago, um, I think it was the second time I was going to the, I went to the Bahamas. He sent me this time to this leaders conference. And um, it was a beautiful conference. Uh, first of all, the, the atmosphere, the environment, the content um, was Beyond anything I had seen, the closest I had seen was was your life and ministry. And I remember after the well, first day, when we when the lunch session was finished, I was just moving around, and the usher came and said to me, "Dr. Moore is calling you." She said, "Me?" He said, "Yes, come." So I I went. I was surprised that he had known me. Went into this room. And this room really fascinated me because when I went into the room, there were leaders all over sitting. The first thing that caught my attention, I guess, by coming from the Caribbean, 
was this huge table of food. This huge table of fruits. If you see fruits of all kinds sitting on the table, and you had all these leaders around, and he asked them to stand and put their hands and welcome this young man. So I came in and I stood up. I was very confused. And then he said to me, he said, if Raphael is my son, excuse me, Bishop calling you my friend, if Raphael is my son, who are you? So I was confused. I wasn't quite sure what to say. Didn't know. I don't want to embarrass myself among such a large audience. He said, if Raphael is my son, who are you? I stayed quiet. He said it the third time, if Raphael is my son, who are you? I didn't say anything. He said, if Raphael is my son, you are my grandson. <laughs> and he had put me to sit right next to him. And he said to me, observe this meeting. And he kept on. And if there's one thing that I learned out of, the, out of that encounter, was the level of excellency that they operated and the kinds of work that he demanded. I, out of that experience, I had a greater appreciation for my pastor and for the way he demanded of us as, as, as leaders around him and the kind of quality work he was expecting from us. Because I saw among the colleagues he worked, the kind of work Dr. Mondo was asking for. And there is where I understood that purpose is what drives us. And you and I must all fulfill our mandate and purpose on earth. So and I like the significant quotes from Dr. Mondo, in my opinion, is the greatness of a man is measured by the way he treats the little man. Compassion for the weak is a sign of greatness. I saw him jump from a stage in Linden and he just went into the crowd and just ministered, literally ministered to everyone or as much as possible. I think this man brought stability and direction to my life. He visited me in prison. I remember sitting in the prison system and watching him via television. The words that came out of his life brought me out of prison. My mind was messed up. And listening to Dr. Miles, the things that he said, and one particular thing that he said, Stay with me. He said, purpose will get you out. And as I sat in that environment and consistently paid attention to what he said, I'm sitting here and I'm really grateful for that man that would have spoken life back into my life when things were tough. But that was not the, the part of it that um, was really significant. I saw the man on television. And after being released from prison, I had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with this man when he came to visit him. I had the opportunity to shake his hand. But I couldn't say to him, we really met. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he also, said, he also said you must decide if you're going to rob the world or bless it with the rich, valuable, potent, untapped resources locked away within you. This, this, this saying is loaded because what he's saying is that in each and every one of us, we have abilities, we have talents, we have qualities that we could make a contribution to our society, to the world at large. And, you know, some persons might say to themselves, well, look, I came from a poor area, a poor environment. My family was in poverty. I don't have nothing. But this is not what he's saying. He's saying that all of us as human beings, we have talents, abilities, and we must use those giftings to serve the world. Don't for one moment believe that you are a nobody and that you have nothing to offer. What is important is to discover your talent, those abilities, and bring them to the table. His greatest, his greatest hero was the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he would find ways to project the Lord Jesus. He was uh, convinced that his purpose was principally transforming followers into leaders. Similarly, he was convinced 
that they needed to touch like Jesus. He needed to be with those, visit with those who were in prison. He needed to clothe those who needed clothing and he needed to provide food for those who were hungry. But he had also passion uh, to see the emancipation of the human spirit and the human mind. Mm -hmm. And um, he was, you could feel the weight. I, for 30 years I uh, served with him, served alongside him. And you could feel the weight that he carried that propelled him to travel and to watch ordinary men transform ordinary men and women. He was not intimidated by politicians. In the words of, 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 of the Honorable, uh, the Right Honorable Gary Christie, who is the current Prime Minister of uh, the Bahamas, he said, Miles spoke truth to power wherever he went. And sometimes he tagged me along mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I watched him address presidents and prime ministers and leaders of countries. I watched them invite him over and over again. I watched him, this mental slavery, this uh, notion that because we are from third world countries means that we are, we must stay behind. Miles was a man from a third world environment, but he had concepts and principles that were driven by an engine that was out of this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So his, even though he came from a third world environment, I don't want to submit to you that he was driven by first world principles. His principles were out of this world. They came out of his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So he would look at impossible situations and you never heard him embracing problems. He, he, uh, and he challenged us around, around him. And um, this, this program is, is, is not enough for me to speak about how I was personally challenged in all the different facets. Um, but he challenged us to change the way we think. And I'll tell you something. Uh, one of the major problems we have as a people, and I mean, I'm now speaking about Guyana, is th th this, this divisiveness that we have allowed to come into our national psyche. Where, well, the rest of the world is moving on. The rest of the car being moving on. We seem to be marking time. And that has a lot to do with mental constructs. Yeah. And we need uh, emancipation from that. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why this brother met, and not just with church people. He understood the importance that salt was not needed principally in the church. Salt was needed in the marketplace. Yeah. And he ventured into the marketplace where the rot and the corruption was present. He ventured in that environment like Jesus. You have, you have to understand when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, you have to understand that transition that took place there. You have to understand the religious people, the right thinking, honest people who have no sin, how they say, how Jesus could go in there? He don't know that man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe um, our brother who has gone to be with the Lord understood that. And just as how when Jesus encountered Zacchaeus and when Jesus left, Zacchaeus said what he was going to do, he was transformed. I watch this uh, servant of God who many offered titles and refused titles because he understood his world was not about titles. Uh, his world was about working and doing the work of God. I, I sincerely believe that he died empty. He was last the one that- Last August, 
I was privileged to attend a leadership seminar with a group of young people from Guyana. And one of the things that touched me deeply is the fact that after Dr. Myers ministered to us, he came down from that stage and he shook our hands. He encouraged us to be agents of change, took pictures with us. And I was so touched by this that he even spent a quite a, a considerable amount of time just intermingling with people, just showed how this man loved people. And to my mind, I believe Dr. Myers was one of the clearest teachers on the topic, on teaching the topic of vision. And in his book, The Principles of Power, The Principles and Power of Vision, he said, eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. Sight is a function of the eyes, but vision is a function of the heart. And he was making reference to the scripture in Nehemiah chapter 4 or 6, when the church, the, backing up a little bit from verse 1, when Sanballat and Tobiah began to uh, discourage the Jews, they started to give all sorts of comments about the rebuilding of the wall. In verse 6 said, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half of its height, for the people worked with all their heart. The Lord had been speaking to me uh, a number of years ago, this is prior to 2002, about doing this very program. And he, the Lord said to me that, um, I want you to go on television, however, do not preach. And I, I well, what, what, what should I do? <laughs> and uh, I, I want you to develop a cadre of men, and you must uh, discuss issues, every issue, using uh, biblical references. That must be the core and the parameters of your of your discussion. I, I said, Lord, I, I don't have a studio, I don't have a camera, I don't have anything, I can't speak. I, I how am I gonna do that? I'm not a, a journalist trained in this area. And uh, for ten years I, I struggled with that. Two thousand and two I was in NASA, it was November, and uh, I was scheduled by Dr. Monroe to make a presentation. I had made my presentation, and um, one night, you know, I'm free, and I'm not relaxed, the service is in full swing, and I got a tap on the shoulder, Dr. Monroe would like to see you, and I said, me? Yes, one of his armor bearers. I, they took me, I followed them and into one of the rooms, soundproof rooms in the hotel. Dr. Monroe was interviewing the Prime Minister, the same gentleman who is now present, uh, Prime Minister. In 2002, Dr. Monroe was interviewing him live from the, from the conference uh, hotel to the nation in the Bahamas. So I stood there, I thought he wanted me to see what was happening. And then the folk came and started powdering my face. So I asked them, well, what was happening here? And they said, <laughs> Dr. Munro says, he, is, he has to go back into that service and you will continue the dialogue with Dr. Pinder and the Prime Minister. <laughs> so I said, he couldn't, he couldn't, me? <laughs> yes. That was my introduction to television. And I stood there with, the, I said, as a matter of fact, I sat there and um, we continued for another 45 minutes. When the Prime Minister left after, I think, 20, 25 minutes, we were joined by, uh, as he then was uh, Vice President of one of the banks in the Bahamas, so it was Dr. Richard Pinder, Henry Francis, and myself. And um, I was numb, I was shocked. 
I was having a discussion, rolling like if I had been prepared for this. And when the lights were turned off, I heard the Lord say to me, this is what I want you to do. Go home and do it. I came home. I've been asking Sister Celicia, who uh, has been with the um, choices since its genesis, uh, if she could find that first program. We didn't even have a camera. But you see, when you have a man later, when you understand the power of vision and being obedient, the, uh, the scope of creativity is not just thinking. We have to move beyond thinking to producing. You know, it's like this country here, some of our political leaders challenging us to move beyond just being producers of primary goods and services, to move to the stage of adding value to what we produce. And, and except we move beyond thinking, it's not just good enough to think, it's a wonderful thing to think. And the same way how we think about advancing the, the, the country, moving it forward, the only way we can do that, we have to produce the environment that will sustain that kind of forward advance. It is it's so critical. And we, we did restart the choices. And um, now Choices has its own studios. It's, 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 it's amazing uh, when you follow vision what happens. So, one program as we reflect on this very a man who had ordinary beginnings, who God used tremendously. And even in his death, he, Pastor Richard, his wife, those two pilots, I know those men personally, and the, the brethren who went down last Sunday evening. Um, it's, it's amazing what God did through their lives. As we leave, not because we are out of ideas, our time was gone. Rob the grave, choose to die empty. Be blessed. We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.